this site on Mars is all I'm going to talk about. It's a cliff, a very steep cliff. Uh, we got up there by landing here, and we were able to walk up on top of the cliff here. This cliff terminates off to the right, and uh, <coughs> it's very difficult to get up there. And it certainly would have been almost impossible to get up there before it was all filled in here with this sand that you can see. Well, this sand was placed here uh, primarily by the insect life forms up on Mars way back in ancient times at this legendary place. Legendary and significant place on Mars. Um, beautiful place. Be very concerned that it wasn't exactly the same today as it was on this day in the 70s. Wow. That ancient Mars from the 70s sounds a really interesting place. Down at the bottom of the cliff here, back in ancient times, we had all the life forms, <coughs> which would include uh, insect life forms, the ant, mantid life forms, and centipedes, and others, and humans, and different types of humanoids, and apes, and others. I love the sound of this guy. He sounds like a really nice guy. He came over to my channel. We had a little bit of banter, really, I suppose, about one of the secret space program vids. And he seemed all right then as well, even though he was taking the piss. When I watch this, it reminds me of someone, actually. He'd say hi to everyone in the street. He was proper friendly, proper loud, just a really great guy. But the day I met him, he was absolutely convinced that the government was about to pour bleach into the ocean and that a poisonous, gaseous wave was going to come in with the sea breeze and kill everyone. He was convinced, it was today's the day, that was his thing, today's the day, they're going to do it today, well, you know, we're not going to survive. And when it didn't happen, you know, it didn't phase him at all, he was just on to the next thing. Um, you, you just do get people like this. And this guy seems to me to be built in that fashion. He's just a really, obviously, he sounds great. Well, he might be an asshole, but he sounds great. It looks like he's just so charmed with this picture of a Martian cliff face uh, that he's made up a massive bunch of shit to go with it. I'll just mention the very special relationship between human beings and the apes. Tragically, the very last of the ancient apes, which apparently had telepathic ability and were more, you know, psionically capable and so forth than the apes that we're familiar with. Um, the last one died out on Mars not too very long ago. But in ancient times, there were many, many apes. And on Ma Mars, men and apes are best buddies. It's man's best friend. They uh, work together. They actually work and move large rocks and carve and do all kinds of things together. Uh, they live next to each other and everything is uh, just a-okay. It always was between human beings and apes uh, on Mars. Much like it should have been on the Earth. But that leads to another story, which is the story of basically the relationship of human beings and animals on the Earth, which I got to take a really good look at. Some ancient records and memories of it's very... Uh, I love that bit. You can almost visualize the proprietary lean on his gatepost going, oh, yeah, look to look at some ancient records. Deep subject there and something that I'm going to get to. But this place down at the bottom we had, you can imagine it bustling away with you know, the ants. There's a centipede sort of a ramp there. They have these things cut everywhere on the planet. I just love this guy's voice. It's brilliant. I, I could listen to this for ages. Funnily enough, after I've edited it, I can listen to it for ages. Before I edit it, there's so many pauses and uhs and all this kind of stuff. This video is half an hour long, but 90% of it is dead air. Now that I've taken all the pauses out of his spiel, it's nice to 
hear the actual story without sort of going mad with boredom. Before I drive you mad with boredom, I jumped in. I know I've let a lot of things slide. The symbiotic partnership relationship between humans and apes on Mars. The telepathic apes of ancient times. The fact that he's looked at memories from ancient earth and the fact that the last ape died out recently on mars but i couldn't take the centipede track how can there be a fucking centipede track what are you talking about do you think you would see a centipede track from a topographic satellite image no and there were giants i suppose there could have been giant centipedes aren't there? i mean we all know I've titled my video King Kong on Mars. He titled his video King Kong on Mars. We all know it's coming, so I suppose they could have been giant centipedes. But I'm not convinced. Just because it's a wiggly animal doesn't mean it would make a wiggly road for itself. And all kinds of life forms would have dwelt down here in a fairly peaceful coexistence. There was one exception one of the ancient giant apes that was still around on Mars. Untamable, wild, savage creature. And it was terrorizing this entire area. And it slept up here. An apex predator with enough food would not die out to the last individual. If there is a King Kong that can live in this ecosystem, there will be a pack of King Kongs, or pride, or group, unless something has changed recently, it will be well within its ecological niche as the apex predator. You only get rid of those either by taking the space away from them, from them or by taking the food away from them. And it sounds to me, in your climax vegetation ecosystem, just like in the movie, uh, there's enough for there to be more than one. The alternative theory available if you're going to have a King Kong in an ecosystem is that there never was a pack or group or more than one, that it's some sort of aberration. This is a mutant ape that grew to gigantic proportions. He can't mate because there isn't any more. So he's not the last of his kind, he's the first and last of his kind. And he's a problem for everything else in the area. The problem with that theory is it's fucking stupid. In this little area here, which I've been on shortly at night, and nobody could get up there. Not the biggest men or apes, I guess one or two at a time could try to climb up here. But if you tried to come in from the left here, it was all such a steep cut there and distance there that you couldn't really get up here from that side or the other side or behind here. There's a very steep cliff. So this ape basically slept here and then would come down in the morning and just scare everyone away, kill anyone who challenged it or got in its way. And it was just a basically, you know, a very dangerous version of King Kong. Oh, he's not King Kong. He's actually a better version, a scarier version of King Kong. Why is there a progression? Why would it be worse than the King Kong we know? Why wouldn't it be exactly the same? Or not quite as mental as the King Kong from the movies, you know? It has to be better because you knew about King Kong before you made this story up about Mars in ancient times. It has to be better because... The 1950s King Kong movie came before ancient Mars. It really was yeah, big, like King Kong. And there it is, carved into the cliff face right there. There's the bullet head looking off to the right here. And it has a huge, expansive chest there. What are you talking about now? Are you saying that's a fossilized giant ape? Or are you saying this is where he slept and this is roughly equates with it? Or what? This bit is not really making sense because the imagery shows fuck all. And the mighty arms right there. Absolutely untamable and the last of its kind on Mars terrorizing the neighborhood. Wow. What happened was a very significant event, which was the denizens down here all had to get together at a certain point to try to figure out what to do about King Kong here. And that prompted interspecies cooperation between the insect life forms, the ant people, mantis, and so forth, and the humans and humanoids and apes and other creatures that lived here. And essentially the insect life forms filled this area here in with all this incredible amount of sediment that you can see. And that allowed a force, an actual force of eight or ten humans and humanoids to come up here and deal with this creature. Previous to this, <laughs> 
individual creatures had taken him on, big ones, you know, apart from the ones that he just did in or attacked because they, they were in his way. The larger creatures that came up here to take him on all met the same fate. And these are their skulls still up here, right next to the carving of this monster. Don't be scared, kids. It's just a giant monkey on Mars thousands of years ago, okay? Where are the skulls? Where's the giant carving of an ape? What the fuck are you talking about? It's not just that you're making shit up from the past. You're making shit up about the actual image in front of us. Where are the fucking skulls? And if that wiggly road was a centipede track, this is actually not very big. It's a pile of sand. The insects that can somehow communicate with the people and the humanoids and the apes have built this track. Eight to ten people have gone up there to take him on because one thing on its own can't take him on and for some reason they could never band together when he stomped down the hill and started smacking things they needed to do it on top of the hill or not at all and now there's skulls up on the hill that nobody can fucking see and it really is the monkey that prompted you know, the earth legend which became a popular story early in the last century of you know, the story of king kong but these are the skulls here, and you can see they're different types. I can't see their different types of skulls up there. I cannot see anything like that. It's really interesting when somebody says, you know, look at that thing, and the thing isn't there. You do get a temporary, well, is it there? Shall I give him the benefit of the doubt reaction? I always remember seeing a guy got, well, he didn't get run over, I don't know what happened to him, he was lying next to the road, looked completely fucked and out of it, and he was a sort of trampy wino, I don't know what you call him in America, a lush, a bum, something like that, but he was a uh, scuttily dressed, crumpled up on the side of the road, and I thought he'd been run over, so I sort of scooted towards him, and at the same time as I did that, some guy in a really nice car stopped and did the same thing, jumped out of his car to check on this guy. So we met him at the same time. And we were right outside the doctor's. We, we, we got him onto his feet. He could move and sort of blar a little bit, but he wasn't making much sense. So we both continued with the theory that he'd been run over. We took him to the doctor's, and it was during the bird flu epidemic. And there was a note on the doctor's door that basically said if you've got bird flu don't come through the door and we ignored that because he'd been run over as far as we could tell and we went through and the woman was saying um has he got bird flu and we're like we've no idea but he's been run over and the guy who jumped out of the car he said suddenly and very authoritatively look he's covered in blood he's had an accident and he and he did this sort of vague pointing down the guy's front and i my instant reaction was shit i didn't notice the blood and the nurse had the same reaction. We're both looking for this blood. And the guy lied. There was no fucking blood. But we were both looking for it. And because of the way he said it, even though I couldn't see it, I still thought it must be there. So things like this, you have to be careful. He's telling us there's skulls on this picture, which there clearly fucking isn't. They're huge. They're gigantic. And the way to get scale on that is to look at the little girl standing right here. She's about just over five feet tall and at this exact moment I'm stepping out from behind her and if you really can zoom in and look at this photo or retouched as it is you can actually see my legs sticking out right there as I'm about to step down onto this little shelf and walk to here and then go up the little staircase into this area the first thing you're going to see is these skulls and this one is this blue one here is like an Easter Island very strange head with the huge nose and the small head there and that man, or that early humanoid, would have been even taller than this ape. And how tall is the ape? If that's five feet, uh, then we're looking five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty years of love. That's a monster. You know, that's a true giant creature. You really are rambling on with yourself at this point. There's no little girl in the picture. We can't see your leg stepping out of a building. There's no five feet of woman or... 30 feet of ape and there's no Easter Island face if someone gave me a photograph an aerial photograph from even if it was around my house would you see the legs sticking out and would you know for sure yes that was me no it's, it's, it's bullshit and so were these men like this strange Easter Island man and whatever this much more 
primitive ape-like skull was and whatever this giant creature was all of them uh, tried to take King Kong on here either one on one or one on two and uh, I go on about this in detail because I was shown the psionic memory of course it goes along with this place and this ape was just absolutely unbeatable look at those arms it was so powerful so fast and when it got angry it just tore everything to pieces like only a truly <coughs> enraged giant super monkey can do and so to take this thing on was uh, a really bad idea witness the skulls of all of these giant creatures that it killed and just kept the skulls up here with it, where it slept at night and kept the whole area terrorized until interspecies cooperation between the human beings and the insect life forms and others that live down at the bottom here prompted the construction of this huge amount of soil. I don't know how long that would have taken them, but you know, working an insect swarm could, could build that fairly rapidly probably. Well you should know dude, you've seen the psionic memory of these events. And then the man and the humanoids and the other civilized apes and there's clear delineation there, could have come up here all the way to the top and come down and got this thing. So when we came up here, the way you get here is we'd land here and just walk up to here and there's a little cut in the rock there where you can walk all the way along uh, with little walls on either side. It's very high to your boat here and then you would slide down this way, that way and back this way once, twice, three times and just be standing right there. So it's a very simple primitive way to get a lot of places on Mars cut into the natural landscape always. They don't build structures Everything they do is built <coughs> into the surface, of the surface of the planet. Makes it very, very attractive. So there's our little humanoid girl, the same one that I met with when we first entered the crater where we landed, the big spider crater, and uh, <laughs> went downstairs and met the giant, saw the giant and life forms. This is the little girl who uh, I went off with around the planet. And this is a remote and obscure uh, place that's not... Um, visited often, I don't, I don't guess, except, you know, maybe by tourists. However, it, it gets so much better because there's a little girl, there's me stepping out behind her. Well, everywhere we went on Mars, we were escorted uh, and protected by centipedes. <laughs> of course, of course you are. Yeah. The centipedes. <laughs> it's good, it's good, because you could call it an armed guard. This is one here. If this would be his head, this is a giant, gigantic centipede, living creature, fabulous creature, <laughs> beautiful iridescent colors, ton of energy, happy seeming, and you know, psionically capable of talking to you. It's not a centipede then, is it? It's a different animal entirely that happens to resemble in some way the form of a centipede. Okay, it, it's an iridescent macro creature with lots of legs that should really have a name of its own and if you were genuinely up here on Mars in ancient times or looking at psionic memories or in the 70s whenever this happened you would know the real name and you would explain it to us in those terms and say it looked like a centipede in order to help us with the visuals so I had a few <laughs> meetings, confrontations with centipede people up there and they, they're probably my favourite very ancient, gigantic, beautiful creatures. So, I guess this little girl just would have come along the wall here and up there. And I stepped out here and walked up to this centipede. And I would call it backing up a bit. And we exchanged, you know, just some conversation. But not out loud. I didn't say anything. It just said, you'll probably like this place. This is, you know, funny. And it also informed me. It said, don't worry about falling. I'll catch you if you slip, right? Because there's no guardrail here, as you can see. This is only, I don't know, eight or ten feet across here, and then it's straight down a long way. No, the obvious slope is not a sheer drop. And what happened to King Kong? Was it just the case that these eight or ten guys went up this thing? It's such a given that they kick the crap out of King Kong. It's not even worth finishing the story. They've dished him. Is that, that's it. And now we're on to giant centipedes. This centipede right here informed me not to worry. I was going to like this place, and then if I fell, 
it would catch me. Okay? <laughs> like a giant, I don't know, it's more like an elephant or something in the way it just seems like a big, strong creature that looks at you and goes, well, don't worry there, little bug. <laughs> I'll take care of you. Really? So, that was an extremely memorable moment, standing right about there. I'm having the centipede just sort of moving around a bit and backing up as I came past it up the stairs in here for a look at King Kong carved into the wall there. I mean, you should be able to see that. That's his eye right there. And this would be his mouth sort of slanting down there and these huge arms starting there. It's an incredibly powerful creature, you know, and incredibly tall. But then so was this man here. was probably taller than King Kong when he was alive. I think Freud would have a field day with this. Everything is massively inflated and you're a little bug and the giant man was even taller than King Kong who was a vicious, more vicious version of our King Kong. So we're looking at, as far as the Earth, uh, pre-cataclysm life forms here. There were giants with a head. They're bigger than this little girl. That is a true giant creature. So we're talking, you know, very light gravity, very thick atmosphere, highly evolved and grown, you know, perhaps genetically assisted life forms. And these are the kind of life forms that were in our solar system. Absolute giants. Okay? That's a skull, and that's a person. Okay? So I walked right up into here, and it was just like a dreamland. It's very much like a dreamland. You can't... It's hard to to take a f visual memory of this back with you. You need to look back at the photo and Jesus, right, you know, because of course there's other carvings going on here and details and things you can't make out. And you know, five minutes later, we'd, ten minutes later, we'd leave here and go somewhere equally impressive and we'd be getting in and out of a <laughs> flying vehicle, you know, over here and seeing all kinds of other stuff. So, um, remembering this place like actually standing there and looking at it is just fairly uh, impossible because it didn't fucking happen.